Hello and welcome to Beulah Land Bible Baptist Church. This once again, we're back here on August the 23rd, Sunday morning. And uh, we're getting prepared for another great day that the Lord's given us. As we look at uh, another week that uh, we're able to uh, praise and worship the Lord. You know, that's what God has created us for, is to worship and to praise Him. And He is so worthy. And when you think about who He is and who you are, it makes you realize how how blessed you are that God has blessed you this week. I want you to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 7. I've got a message I want to share with you. And it's concerning the times we're living in today, the days that we're living in. So the message is going to be primarily to Christians. But if you're not saved, I want you to understand God wants you to be saved. You need to be saved. And time's running out. Because we're getting closer to the end times. And uh, we're, as the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 17, verse 26, and it, as it is in the days of Noah, shall so, so shall it be in the, in the days of the Son of Man. In the last days, he says, it's going to be like the days that it was in Noah. Well, the wickedness, and then we're going to be in Genesis 7, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to see how that uh, runs into what we're looking at today. I've titled my message, God's Shut-Ins. We know a lot of people today are shut-in because of, I know we got several ladies in our church and men in our church that are shut-in because of this coronavirus. They've been shut-in, they've been shut in the house, they've been kind of kept up and stuff. And it's been a long time and a lot of them say, boy, I am getting tired of this, you know. And I understand that. So, and so, so the message is going to be related to uh, God's shut-in, amen. All right, so we look in Genesis chapter 7. I want you to begin reading with me, and I'm going to read in chapter 7, verse 1. He says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this, in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt make of thee by seven, the male and his female, and, <coughs> and of the beast that are not clean by two, the male and his female of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alight upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wife, with him into the ark, because of the water of the flood. Of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Then there went in two by two, two and two, unto Noah, unto the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood was upon, were upon the earth. And in the six hundredth, uh, in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the seventeenth day of the month, the same day, were all the fountains of the deep, great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And in the self same day entered Noah and Sam and Ham and Jacob, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons and them into the ark. And they and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird and every sort. And they went into, the Noah, went into Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of flesh as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. That's what I'm titled my message, God's Shut In. Let's pray. Father, please, I pray you'd help us today as we get through the word that it would be a word that would help each one of us to get something from you. But Lord, I want to speak primarily to the Christians. I want to be an encouragement to the Christians, but also I want to have, have ask that you'd help uh, the Christians to be able to see the days that we're living in and that God that you got all things under control and that you do all things well. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, 
as it was in the days of Noah, the Bible, Jesus said this, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the last days. And so we're seeing in these last days. I want you and I to know and remember this, that whatsoever God has allowed, has allowed to happen, has his protection, and God does all things well. All things that are done, God does all things well. All things, even for the shut-ins. You know, when the Lord was about to send a great flood upon the earth to wipe out the wicked inhabitants. Now, we're living in those very same days of Noah, and God is getting ready to do it again. He's getting ready to shut us in, and, he, and that's probably maybe why we're being shut in. Is because God is being shut in because he's getting ready to bring a, a wrath, a flood. And he said he would not do it in the flood, but he's getting ready to do it again. Now, when God invited Noah and his family in the ark and shut them, God said to Noah, he said, Noah, you'll be safe in here. Trust me. You know, if there's anything that you and I can do in these last days is we can trust God. If you're ever shut in, if you're not able to get out, if you're not... <clears throat> then we can trust God. I don't understand all this. I didn't see all this. The reason that God for, and He flooded all the earth and all the wickedness in the land is that you know is because that maybe because uh, God uh, 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 knew that uh, they couldn't, we wouldn't be able to stand that. And when He's when He looked upon that, He said, He said that we can trust Him. You know, He had had He not done this alone alone. There was powerful giants. Remember, there was giants in the lands back then who lived in a time. We're living in a time of a lot of giants. A lot of, every time you turn around, there's something big coming around the corner. And they could have been, this, these giants and them could have changed or could have altered some things. But God put them in an ark to protect them from the giants. And the, maybe if these giants were been, been able to, uh, hadn't been able to, be, if God hadn't got rid of them, they may have caused chaos and disorder, confusion, anarchy, madness, unruliness. Isn't that what we have today is these giants? is causing all this chaos so God said let's time to shut them in by being confined into the ark Noah and his family were preserved he became a shut-in amen not through God's words because he disfavored God not because God did it but he did he was shut in because he found grace in the eyes of the Lord he wasn't being punished he was, a, he was found by grace, and God was protecting him. And God said, trust him. And the same thing is probably true that you and I are facing today. The good Lord has <coughs> called us aside, not to shatter our dreams, not to confine us, but to work out his wise design in our lives and bring us through that which we're about to come to. And God is saying to you and I as shut-ins today, trust me. You're safe here. You're safe here. Now think for me just for a moment with me, okay? Allow God to speak to your heart as, you, as, as a born-again child of God. And I want to talk about some shut-ins. Now, being shut in, okay? Being shut in, we're being shut in from the noise and the distraction and the strife of this world. Amen? If there's anything that we need to be getting away from is from the world and the worldliness. Stay focused on the Word of God. God's already told us these things are going to come to pass. He says these things, and he says in the last days, in Noah's day, he said when they come in there, he said, be sure you know. He said, I'm going to shut you in. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you, and it's going to be all right. I want you to stay focused on the Word, focused on God. Shut in is not to me things be, would allow to clutter up our life. If there's anything that's going on, is what's going on in the world is to is to keep us focused on the world and the things of the world and keep us dis distracted and keep us in uh, turmoil and keep us. And folks, I'm telling you something. God's got this under control. He knows what He's doing. We ought to be focused on the things of God, so, and not the noise of the world. Focus on the Word. You said, you know, they're trying to erase history all the time. The Bible which you hold in your hand, I hope you keep the Bible in your hand, keep it close, has already told us the history. History came from God. The reason they're trying to get rid of history is because they're trying to get rid of God. You know? He's, he's shutting us in to kind of get us away from the noisy things of the world and help us to stay focused on Him and His Word, you know? 
God's a jealous God. And because of his jealousy, he wants us to stay focused on him. He wants us to get rid of the distractions and the things that clutters up our lives. He don't want us to stay focused on the, those things that, that may be and could be and ca cause. He wants us to stay focused on Him. So being shut in calls us to shut in from the noise and the distraction and stay focused on the Word, on the word of God. Not only does it say that, but, but being f shut in focuses on the peace and faith and hope. You know? I know that it's going to get better for me as a Christian. Amen. You know, I'm, I know that my, I have peace knowing that I may, I may be shut in, I may be shut out from the world, but I'm shut in and I have peace that God's going to take care of me. I have faith that it's going to be soon. I know that everything I can do, I can, my faith, my peace, my hope comes in knowing that I'm a shut in for God. Amen. And you know what that does when you shut in the peace and the faith and the hope? Is it shuts out the fear and the doubt. You know? I've talked to many Christians these last few weeks and a lot of them are doubting. A lot of them are having... They're getting, they're getting the shut-in disease. I don't know how you call it. Cabin disease? Or cabin fever? What do they call it? And I, and I, and I know. I, I, I know. And... and and you, you're afraid to get out of there. Turn down. So, but listen, just trust God by faith and hope. And no. And so that, why? So that you know that you're in there so it won't let fear. Fear fear is, God said, well, he's not the author of fear. He don't want us to be afraid. He, want, he don't want us to doubt. He wants us to trust him. That's why the world is trying to shut the church down. You know, do anything to we go to church. He said, you know, you can go do this, you can go protest, you can go and do everything you want to, but no, we don't want you going to church. And see, they're trying to shut the church down. They're trying to keep you. They want they want to put the fear of you that, hey, you can go out here and ride and shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of thousands of people and you'll be okay. You and but you can't go to church because they want you to put a fear and a doubt about there's where you're gonna get your problem. Listen, folks, God's got his protective hands upon us. We don't have to worry about that. I'm, I'm not afraid of this world. I'm not afraid of what the, what the world does. I'm I'm, I'd be, if you're going to be afraid as a Christian, be afraid of what God can do. The world can only do one thing to you. That's, and, 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 and it makes your life uncomfortable may even kill you. But God can only kill you, but he can send you to hell. If you're not saved, that's where you're going to go. I know we're living in a time where people say, well, you know, I don't know if I believe hell. They, they like to believe heaven because it's good, but they don't want to believe hell. But hell's real. Real people go there. And the Bible says that the, the, the torment and the flame and, the, uh, and the, where the worm doesn't die, and it's just and, and be weeping and wailing and gnashing the teeth all the time and tormenting the, and the flame. I don't know why anybody would choose that. You say, well, I'm not choosing that. If you don't choose Jesus, then that's what you're choosing. But a shut-in, when we're shut-in, it, it's keep us from noise and distractions and, and strife and to help us to stay focused on the Word. Not only does it shut-in, but it helps us have peace and faith and hope and lets us not have us and hold out and, and suppress the fear and the doubt. Shut in is when God shuts us in is where God can work on the heart. See, with God, it's always a heart thing. <clears throat> when I got saved, I, I gave God my heart. I said, Lord, I, I know who I am. And I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to be saved. I didn't want to go to hell. And, and I asked God to save me. And ever since I've been saved, he worked on my heart. And I'm thinking that during this time when God put us in, when Noah put in, I mean, God put Noah in there, and the Bible says, and he shut him in and stuff. And that, that see, Noah was there for over a year. See, he was, he was there in that ark with his family and all those animals for over a year. I imagine he had a lot of time to think. I imagine it worked on his heart. I know that these days that I'm living in, I, every time I see something, I hear something, I log, I log in on something, or I, I read something in the Bible, it causes me to think. And some of the things I think, well, I didn't remember that. I don't, I don't like that. But God's working on my heart. You know, I, 
if I'm not careful, I can get into the flesh just like anybody else. And because I, I get in the flesh, I get in, I get to be as mean and wicked and and nasty as this whole world is. I get, I know if you're shut in very long, you you get cabin fever. It gets to where you just it drives you nuts. When God shuts you in, it's the time for us to. He works on your heart. Now that's a that's a positive thing. But let me say this to you right off, okay? He's not going to force himself on you. That's a positive thing to get your heart ready. You know, we, you and I as Christians should be getting ready for what's coming down the road. We know what's coming. Jesus is coming back. We know there's going to be trials and tribulations. We know that there's a lot of things that's going to, uh, the, uh, these things that's going to happen in these in these last days and stuff. And Jesus said it must come to pass. And, but he's we're to get ready for that. Get your heart ready. You know, you can't get ready for something you don't know that's happening, but you can get ready for that. But you know, let me ask you, are you ready? <laughs> I, the old kids playing games is that, are you ready now? Here I come. Well, we, you and I as Christians, we need to get ready because ready not because here he comes. You see, it's being shut in. God's got you shut in. God's got us shut in. The world's not going to shut in. He's a, God's allowed us. God's brought us to this place. All the, Even in Noah's day, he said the wickedness was around him and all that and stuff. And then there was a time when God said, now get all these people, get all these animals and put them in here and stuff. And he said, and he says, and shut in. He says, and trust me. Trust me because I'm going to keep you, what, from the distraction and the and the noise and the things of the world and I'm, and let you stay and, and so that you won't get uh, your so your faith and your hope will be built up and you won't let fear and doubt keep you from being uh, what I want you to do and get you pretty and get your heart ready for what for what's getting ready to come I don't imagine that Noah see Noah didn't know he didn't know what all was coming on there but I imagine when that boat started floating him, him and his family was in there going whoa what's this you know I don't know but uh, I'm sure God's got it under control and you know when you get things where you don't really know what's going on and then sometimes as Christians you and I we don't know exactly what's going on or how it's going to come on there we just trust God again now get ready now notice this not only is it shut in to help it keep out the noise and distractions and help us stay focused on the word and then also help us with peace faith and hope and, and, and shut out the doubts and the fear that we have. And it helps work on our heart. But listen, shutting is knowing that one day uh, that door is going to be open. And we're going to come out of that heaven's door. And we'll be shut in with God for eternity. Amen. You know, he's shutting us in knowing that one day I shall come out of heaven's door. And I'll be there for eternity. You know? I, it's going to get better for me. I may not, I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to be a shut-in here on this, in this little space and, and uh, season that we're going through now, but I know one day that door's going to open and I'm going to get to come out and to be shut-in with Jesus Christ. You know? While you feel hemmed up by your present restriction, restricting circumstances, the Savior has a wise purpose in this all, in it all. He, he knows what he's doing. He's shut us in. I'm shut in. I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm going to praise God. I'm, here's the time where I get to praise God. I'm shut in. So what are you doing? I'm shut in. You see, you've got cabin fever? Yeah, but some, but I know one thing. i got God to take care of me. And I know that one time he's going to, you know, he's going to open that door. <laughs> the Bible says in the windows were open. You know? Jesus is going to say, come up hither. He's going to open that door for all the shut-ins. If you're saved boarding in, he, you'll be going, you'll be called up other. If you're not, you, you'll be left behind. Let me tell you something about left behind. There's going to be a, a great tribulation. First three and a half years of it is going to be deception. The last back three and a half years is going to be destruction. I tell you something, you don't want to go through that. And God didn't design that for you to go through. It's say it's a set aside for the Jewish people. He wants you to be saved now. It's a last ditch resort. You know? Oh folks, you're all shut up and shut in. Praise God. 
Has he been working on you hard? If not, you are. Being shut in then becomes what we allow it to be. Okay? If you want to stay shut in and discouraged and defeated, then you can be and you will be. <clears throat> but it's an also a time for us to discover and enjoy God's these new green pastures that He's brought into us. He's every time you read the Word of God it's it's just like going into a new, fresh, green pasture that the shepherd's led you to. And then while you're being there, and you know, he says, now we're going to come from this pasture and go into this one, and I'm going to keep you shut in, but boy, what's the opportunity you're going to have in this new pasture? You can let anything in this world defeat you and beat you, or you can let God use it for his glory. It's a new opportunity to find a way, a new way to worship and to praise God. Some fellow I was talking to this week is very discouraged, and I told him, I said, you know, praise God that he's still on the throne. And he said, I know, but he's still discouraged. He's still on the throne no matter how discouraged you are. He's shut in. He's, he's, he's got to the place where he's, he feels like he's got cabin fever, that it can't get no worse. So let me give you something here. Be patient. Amen. Now I know that Noah didn't know how long he's going to be in that boat. I don't know how long we're going to be in this one. But be patient. Be patient knowing that God does all things well. Knowing that we're shut in and God knows it. And as Noah was shut in for a year, I don't know how long we're going to be shut in. But then there came a day. What a day that must have been when God opened that door and they came out and they looked around there and it all new, everything was great. I thought, man, what a day it's going to be when God opens that door and brings us into heaven and it's all new and great. No disruptions, no, 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 no uh, uh, sin, no sorrow, no more death, no more. Wow, just being a great land of no more. The opening of a new day for the rest of your life as a new life as a born again Christian amen if you're saved praise God with me you're shut in yeah I know but don't let it get you discouraged let it encourage you that God's coming back he's got it under control amen as it was in the days of Noah we're there and I was telling my dad when we was we went out I was out, drove to the country and back, and I was telling him, I said, Dad, you don't ever think about what we got going on in this world today and well, what it must have been like in Noah's day. You know? Man, I'm glad God shut him in. I'm glad God shut us in, too. Thank God for being a shut-in. Thank you for being with us today. May the Lord bless you as you continue the rest of this Sunday afternoon. Keep looking up. And keep cheering and telling others about Jesus. Someday soon, he's coming back. But until then, we're going to be shut in. Let us be praising God and focus on him and his word. I thank you again. Bye-bye.